Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the second module of our deep learning course where we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. And today's video is about matrix for deep learning. So let's understand about matrix and how this matrix are exactly used in the domain of deep learning. So this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So we all would have studied about matrix in our school days. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers arranged in rows and columns. So this we all know, right? So a matrix contains some number of rows and some number of columns. And it is a fundamental concept in mathematics, especially in areas like linear algebra, which is crucial for understanding and working with many algorithms and data structure used in deep learning. So this is just like a, a basic definition of a matrix, which is nothing but it contains some rows and columns. And in terms of deep learning, right? So it is one of the primary data structure. So matrix are this primary data structure by which the data is represented and how this data is manipulated within a neural network. So that's what is basically given here. And if we just take an example, we can represent a matrix this way. So let's say that we have a matrix a and i and j represents the number of rows and number of columns so i would represent the number of rows and j represent the number of columns and each uh, element would kind of have an address so let's say this a11 basically represents that this element is present in first row and first column this element is present in first row second column and so on so this we would represent it as like a i j matrix and uh, these are some examples so this is a two cross two matrix which has two rows and two columns and this is a three cross three matrix which has like three rows and three columns so this is just like some basic definition of matrix and a few examples of like matrices now let's understand how this uh, you know matrices are exactly used in deep learning so the first aspect is data representation. So in deep learning, data sets are often represented as matrix. So for instance, if you consider this uh, image problem, right? A batch of image is typically stored as a 4D tensor. So if you just take an image data set, right? So tensors are nothing but they are I-dimensional matrix. So you can like think about it that way and the operations and other concepts that we learn for matrix can be scaled up to learn for tensor as they are nothing but I-dimensional matrices. So as I said, so a batch of images uh, in a data set is typically stored as this 4D tensor where this dimension would correspond to the number of images like the number of images in a batch so it can be let's say 32 64 or some number so first uh, element would be your uh, number of images and then you would have your height width and color channel whether it is like a grayscale or a rgb channel so these are represented as this uh, you know 4D tensor which are i-dimensional matrices and if you take a single image that can also be represented as matrix with height, uh, width and, and color dimension and so on. And then we have this weights and bias. So neural network consists of these layers, right? So we have this input layer, uh, uh, you know, hidden layers and so on. So these layers of neural network are defined by matrices of weights and vectors of biases. So all this uh, you know weights would be represented as matrix and the bias is kind of a single term if you consider single neuron so if you consider like all the neurons uh, in a layer so your bias will be a vector and your uh, matrix will be the weights so that is like another representation of this weights and bias and then we have this activation function so after matrix multiplication of inputs and weights so we basically do this uh, product of this you know input values and weight value and then add it to the bias right so after that we apply this non-linearity uh, using the activation function so it can be a tanh activation function uh, softmax or a relu activation function right so these are basically matrix based computations so that happens so we have this uh, transformations that happen so that is like one place where this matrix operations are used and then we have this back propagation so in back propagation is a place where the weights of the neural network are adjusted and we kind of calculate this gradients using uh, you know mathematical concepts like chain rule uh, matrix calculus and so on so that is like one place where the operations and the matrix calculus are used and then we have this convolutional operation so the main aspect of a convolutional neural network is the convolutional layers where the process of uh, this convolution happens with the filters so these convolutional operations are basically implemented as matrix multiplication and that is one application of matrix and then we have batch processing uh, which is basically you know you have this batch of images and this all this batch of images are processed uh, in a neural network right they are like the images are learned within the neural network so for this batch processing matrix are like used and this also helps in the parallel processing of the data and this kind of takes leverage of uh, you know the gpus that we have which is basically used to calculate this 
all this matrix uh, calculations in a parallel and distributed way and then we have this dimensionality reduction so we have this concepts like uh, you know pca principal component analysis and we have this singular value decomposition so which is mainly used to reduce the dimensions of your data and for this feature extraction thing so there the concepts of this matrix decomposition and all those are used so these are some of the uh, widely used applications of matrices in deep learning so if you didn't understand few of these kind of jargons that's fine so we will discuss in detail about some of these operations and how these are used as well so you can like wait for that video probably but overall you can just get this overall idea of matrix are like as i said one of the primary data structure used uh, within the neural network they are used for both representing as representation as well as the manipulation of data okay so i hope everyone is clear uh, about the things that we have discussed and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching